I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the concept of the component in the Figma and you know how to make different variants using the properties that you're defining for each component and control the look and feel of your element using those features. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect variables to those properties and in result control and manipulate the look and feel of your component using the conditional prototyping. To show you how this thing is working, I'm going to make a view mode switcher, which user can use in order to switch between the card or list view mode in the layout. So get sure to watch this video until the end. And if you are new here, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, like this video and share this video with the designers that you think they would be interested in this topic. And of course, don't forget to share your thoughts and opinion and feedback in the comment section. Now without further ado, let's get started. My name is Kia and here is the chemo. Welcome back to my channel. So first of all, I need to design one teaser in two different variants. The first variant is going to be for the card view mode. And the second variant is going to be for the list view mode. For both of these variants, I need two design elements. The first one is the text, which is going to be the headline of my teaser. And the second element that I need is the image. In one of these variants, the image is going to be the background image and in the other variant is going to be the thumbnail. So I'm gonna pick up the text tool and add my placeholder text to my canvas. For the text styling, I'm going to set the font size on 20 pixel and the line height on 110%. This is really depend on your preference, just choose what you like and what you think is better for your design. The next foundational element that we need for this teaser is image. So I'm going to the resources section and switch to the plugin tab. And here I'm going to search for an splash plugin. I usually use an splash plugin in order to add some image placeholder or even sometimes search for the final uh, image that I need in my design. Here, I'm going to search for the model. And then from the list that I have here, I'm going to click on one of the images, for example. I'm gonna resize this image to something more proper. And then I'm gonna get sure that the image is going to stand behind the text. Here in the layer list, you can see that right now the image is on top of the headline and that's why we cannot see the headline text. So I'm going to bring it below the headline. Now we have the foundational element that we need for our teaser, the headline text and the image. Now it's time to use the frame and auto layout in order to design our final component. So I'm gonna select these two layer and then use the combination key Shift A uh, to create one frame that you can see here from number one and add this image and headline as a child layer to that frame. And automatically, we applied also the layout at the same time. First of all, I'm going to rename the frame number one to teaser. And here we can see that we have this uh, very crazy name for our image, which I'm going to change it to image, which make it easier for me to understand the layers. So now it's time to work on the position of each child element within the teaser. And of course, the resizing behavior of them to get sure that we have a responsive layout. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the headline text. And here, I'm gonna turn off the absolute positioning for this element. I'm going to get sure that the teaser frame has a fixed weight and height, first of all. And then I'm going to select the image and set the positioning for this element to absolute. And then I'm going to get sure that the order of layers are in a proper way that we can see the headline on top of the image and set the left and top and uh, right and bottom margin to maybe something around 12 pixel. And then for the text alignment, I'm going to set it on the align bottom left. I'm going to select the text itself and set the text alignment to the left. In the last step, I'm going to get sure that the image that we have is bigger than the teaser frame to kind of cover whole frame. And in the constraint section, uh, in the properties panel, I'm going to get sure that my uh, kind of image is going to get scaled when we make the teaser bigger or smaller. So I'm going to select the left and right constraint uh, horizontally and vertically, I'm going to set it on top and bottom. And then I'm going to select the teaser frame one more time. And I would like to have a, a smoother corner. So I'm going to set the uh, corner reduce to 12 pixel and then uh, check on the clip content. 
As you can see, if I select teaser frame and start to scale it horizontally, you can see that the image is behaving properly to cover the whole frame. And that's exactly what I wanted to have. It's, it works also vertically very well. There's one more step. Uh, if I select the headline text, you can see that we set the resizing behavior horizontally and hug the content, which means if we start to make the length of the text more than the uh, teaser frame, uh, you can see that the text is going to get out of the frame and this is not what we wanted to have. So I'm going to set the horizontal resizing and the fill the container to get sure that the text is going to always uh, stay within the frame. Now we solve this issue, we can also change the text back to the headline. This is the first variant of our teaser. The second variant, as we said before, is for the list view mode, which means I need to make a copy of the teaser and this time I'm going to select the image and I'm going to turn off the absolute positioning for the image this time. I would like to have a stack of the image and the headline. Before I do anything, I'm going to select the image itself and I'm going to get sure that it's going to fill the container so uh, it's not going to get out of the teaser frame. Now I would like to change the, uh, the orientation of the stack that we have in this teaser frame uh, to the uh, horizontal. So I'm going to the auto layout section and here I'm going to change the layout that we have to horizontal. And then I'm going to get sure that the headline is going to always stand in the middle of the teaser and not bottom or top by just changing the alignment of my layout. I guess we are fine now. I'm going to just resize my teaser a little bit smaller to make it more like a list. And then I'm going to just change the padding to 8 pixel to kind of occupy less space. Now we have our second variant of the teaser. We are fine to combine these two to one component. Okay, I'm gonna select these two teasers that we made and then from here, I'm going to click on create a component set. And this way, we basically make one component with two different variants. The name of this component is going to be teaser, which is fine. But then when I come to here to the properties panel in our design uh, panel, you can see that we have this property number one, which is basically going to define our different variants. So first of all, I'm going to change this to variant, the name that I can understand it better. And then I'm going to select the first variant and then I'm going to change the value for this properties to card or card. Yeah. And then I'm going to select the second variant and I'm going to change the value for this property this time for this variant to list. This means if we make an instance of this component by drag and drop it from the asset panel to our design file, we can switch between two different variants by just changing the value of these properties. So right now it's on the card. I can switch the value for these properties to the list or I can switch back again to the card. Now it's time to design our button, which user can use it in order to switch between two different view modes. In order to make this button, I'm going to import two icons for each view mode, and then I'm going to design a button for them, and then it's time to work on our prototype. So I'm going to open the resource one more time and search for the feather icon plugin. I'm going to run this plugin and search for the list icon. And then I'm going to click on it and import the icon into my uh, design canvas. Then I'm going to search for the grid icon and then again click on it and import the icon into my design. Now I would like to make these two icons look like a button. So I'm going to select the first one and then make a new frame and apply the layout on it in order to have possibility to define a background a color and padding around the icon. So I'm going to use the combination key shift A, which is going to do all the actions that I mentioned. I'm going to rename the frame that we made to button. And then I'm going to add maybe a background color. It can be just normal white or it can be a little bit grayish. Then I'm going to also increase the border radius to uh, maybe 10 pixel to have a round corner. This is nice for me. I mean, I won't really spend more time here. I'm going to make a um, other copy of this. And this time I'm going to drag and drop the list icon within this button. Here, I'm going to select these two buttons that we made. And one more time, make a new frame and apply auto layout on that. Now we group basically these two uh, buttons with each other. Now I would like to make a component 
with two variants. The first variant is going to show to the user that the, the user selected the grid mode. Uh, and the second variant is going to show to the user that they selected the list mode. This means that I can convert the switcher that we made in the previous step uh, to a component by uh, clicking on this icon on top. And then I click the plus button, which is going to add a variant. I'm going to select the switcher one more time. And here I'm going to change the properties that we uh, kind of uh, made uh, to variant. But as you can see, these two variants are identical. They are same. As I said, the first variant is going to show that the grid uh, view mode is activated. So I'm going to select the grid mode. Uh, button and then I'm going to change the background color here from the design panel to maybe purple and then in the second variant I'm going to select the list button and change the background color to purple which is showing that now the list is activate in the last step I'm going to just rename the variant or the value for the properties that we have the variants for the first uh, variant I'm going to set it on grid and the first second variant, I'm going to set it on list. We basically did the same thing for our teaser. So now we are all ready to go for the next step, which is going to be designing our final prototype. I'm going to make one frame. I'm going to select the frame tool. And here from the uh, preset that we have, I'm going to choose one of them randomly, maybe this time iPhone 14 and 15 per max. I'm going to change the name to preview. And then from the asset panel, I'm going to add one teaser and one switcher to my uh, frame. As I said in the intro of this video, we have different ways to prototype this interaction. We would like to have this possibility that the user switch between different view mode by clicking on these buttons and of course see that the layout is changing. However, in this video, I would like to use variables in order to control uh, the variant, the type of the variant that we have of each component in our layout. Here you can see that if I select the teaser, we have this property which we defined it before and it has to value, card or list. We can make a variable and connect it to this value which will help us to use the uh, conditional uh, prototyping uh, to manipulate this value and in result uh, change the variant of the component that we have in our design. You will understand what I'm saying when we start to do it. So first of all, I'm going to select one of the component that we have in our design. In this case, I'm going to select the bottom. And here in the properties panel in the component section, I'm going to next to the uh, property that we have, the variant. And then I'm going to click on this icon, with, which is letting me to connect the value of this property to a variable. But at this moment, I do not have any variable, so I'm going to click on this plus button to make one new one. I'm going to change the name of this variable to view mode. And the initial value for this variable, I'm going to set it on card. And then I'm going to click on create the variable. As you can see, uh, this property has been connected to the variable that I made, the view mode, which means if I go to the local variable and then here I change the value of this variable to list, you can see that uh, now we switch to the list uh, mode in this button, in this component. Now I will go back to the card and you can see again we switch back. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the next component that we have in our design, which is the teaser. I'm going to the component setting in the properties panel. And I'm going to select on this icon and this time I'm going to select it to the same variable that we made before. Now, if I go to the local variable panel and change the value for this variable, you can see that the both component that we have are going to switch to the, to the, to the next variant which in this case is going to be the list. Now I'm going to change it to the card and you can see how we can easily switch back to card view mode. Just there is one point here that you need to have in mind that you need to get sure that the value that you define for the variable that you made should be exactly the same value that you have here for your component for different properties. For example, we have this variant properties 
which has two value. And if we would like to connect our variable to this component, we need to get sure that we use the same exact value. Now, before I work on the prototyping, I would like to finalize my layout. So I'm going to maybe make one copy of this teaser, maybe more, and then select all these teasers and use the combination key shift A to make a list, uh, which is easier to kind of uh, work with. So I'm going to set the uh, gap between these teasers to maybe eight pixel. And then I'm going to set the size of this frame, uh, maybe a little bit bigger to cover a whole page. And then I'm going, going to select all the teasers one more time and set the uh, horizontal resizing behavior and fill the container in this way, they will cover whole page. And in the final step, we need to define our interaction and finalize our prototype. Interaction is basically the, the, the thing that is going to happen if the user click on this button. So I'm going to select this switcher here and then switch back to prototype panel. And in, here in the interaction section, I'm going to click on the plus button. The trigger type uh, is going to be uh, on tap. So whenever user tap this element, our interaction is going to happen. The interaction type itself, I'm going to set it on conditional. And the reason is that I would like to first check in which view mode we are, the user is, and then define the action. So for example, I would say if the view mode is equal to a card, which is the initial state, then I would like that we switch to, I will use the set variable as a interaction type again. I would like to switch to uh, list mode, which means I need to set the value for the variable that we had, the view mode, to the list. So you can see that how easily this prototype or this, this condition is working. And if it's else, like uh, if it's not the card or if, if it's something else, then I would like to set the variable or the set the value of the variable that we have to list. Now I would like to check the prototype and see how these things are going to work. So I'm going to select the preview frame and going to run the preview. Okay, let's click on this button and you can see that the switcher is working very good. So we can easily switch between different variants of our component uh, by just having this simple conditional prototype for our button. You could see how easily we can make it variables and connect them to the properties that we have in the component and then manipulate them using the conditional prototyping and expression writing. This will help us to simplify very complex prototypes and interaction and use less effort to make them happen. I hope you learned something new in this video and if it was so, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and share your thought and opinion with me in the comment section. And get sure to share this video with your designer friend if you think it's going to be helpful for them as well. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.